Well, it's often thought that companies should just seize all these opportunities around them, that that's the entrepreneurial way. But in fact, more companies perish of indigestion than starvation. In other words, they try to take on too many things. So one of the things that business leaders, emerging business leaders can do to help their businesses win is to stay focused. It's so easy to flip flop with the flavor of the week and try some new idea and try to serve everybody. But when you try to serve everyone, you end up serving no one. And finding a great way to service a customer, um, not being lost in the pack, but doing something that's truly differentiated and staying focused on that point of differentiation can make all the difference in the world. The answer depends on where that company is coming from. So for example, uh, Google or 3M are large organizations, yet they're very creative because they've built a culture of innovation and creativity. So it's much easier to effectuate change in something that's already fun and flexible, such as those. That being said, for the larger organizations that are more traditional, there's still plenty of room for opportunity. The way it starts is not by running down the hall saying, hey, let's all be creative today because it's just not gonna work. It's not gonna effectuate change. The first thing we need to do is make a case for change. And so if that's going to a, a boss or the CEO and saying, listen, here's examples of companies that didn't evolve, that didn't remain creative, that lost their edge and suffered greatly. And it's wonderful that we're in a period of success, but let's not become complacent. Let's not become intoxicated by that success and allow it to be our undoing. So first step is making the case for change. The second thing to do is get a small group together, not issuing an edict from the top, hey, the whole 8,000 person company needs to go be creative. That's not gonna work. Having a small team, three or four people, try a little something new, something different, and rack up some results. Because results will spread more aggressively in organizations than hype. In other words, if we can get a small three or four person team together, try something new and innovative, and show some wins from it, then the new team down the hall is gonna pick up the same best practices. And then another team will start to do it. And you can start to spread creativity like a virus from within if you're doing it in small chunks and celebrating the wins along the way. Well, it, physical surroundings can make a big difference on creativity. Uh, I talked a little bit about individual fitness, although not that much. It wasn't a fitness book, of course. But, but if, you know, if you have a huge steak lunch and three martinis, you're not going to be all that creative. And so you know, if you overdo it on the carbs or whatever, you're not, it's just not a natural state to get going. It's like um, you wouldn't put lousy, crummy fuel in your automobile, yet we put lousy, crummy fuel in our bodies all the time and then wonder why we go into a haze in the afternoons. Um, but, but more importantly, I think, than that is the physical environment around us. Artists, musicians, playwrights for centuries have gone to inspiring places to be inspired. On the other hand, we put our people in boring gray offices sitting at their beige cube with fluorescent lighting and we wonder why we have no creativity. I mean, corporate Canada is very much like a sensory deprivation chamber. What we need to do instead is, certainly there's time and place for that. If you need to get a project done, sit at your cube. But if you want your team to be inspired and come up with new ideas, you don't have to redecorate, go to an art museum. Go for a walk in nature. If you put your people in an inspiring environment, they'll come up with better ideas. There's the old cliche that, oh, I had this great idea when I was in the shower. It's because you were in a relaxed, non-traditional environment. And the more we can impact our team members with good environments, the more creativity we'll discover. Another challenge that companies are facing is that of generational differences. You have people who are in their 20s and early 30s that think very differently than their previous generations. And they're not gonna just come on in. You're not gonna attract the best and brightest talent if you expect them to just simply follow the rules. These are people who have been called the most inspired and inspiring generation in history. But they need to, be, they need to have the opportunity to leave their fingerprints on the organization. So if you can make an environment that's safe to be creative, that's safe to take risks, that's safe to express yourself and your ideas, you're gonna not only drive more progress inside the company, but it'll also be a powerful tool to attract the best and brightest. It's a really tricky question and an important one um, because creativity itself can't be measured such in the same way that you can measure a temperature or you can measure the number of bolts sitting in inventory. Um, but there are 
leading indicators and there are secondary indicators that do demonstrate creativity. The first thing to do, I would do, if I was a, a CMA working in an organization, is benchmark yourself in a few categories against market leaders. So for example, how many of your products or services were invented in the last two years versus not invented in the last two years? Um, what's your ratio of sort of soft skills people, such as people with philosophy degrees or art degrees, versus hard skilled people? Um, what's the number of patents or IP protection that you file on a yearly basis? What's the percentage of uh, overall budget allocated to R&D versus other types of costs? And so uh, that, in some organizations, very quickly can paint a stark picture. And even though a profit and loss statement, which is a trailing indicator, may be positive, those are, tend to be leading indicators, which could signal uh, turbulent times ahead if we're falling behind. The other thing, though, I have to say, and I think Albert Einstein said it best, is that not everything that counts can be measured. And knowing that those that change history are the ones that are disruptive, knowing that the most value that's been created in the world, the world's most valuable company, Apple Computer, was a, is, a, is a farm for wonderful ideas. It's not about squeezing costs out of the middle. It's about driving the top line through innovation. So even though sometimes it becomes a bit squishy to measure raw human creativity, I think we can look ourselves in the mirror and sometimes we need to apply good old fashioned human judgment and say, are we investing heavily enough? Are we prioritizing creativity and innovation? The companies that do, even the communities and cities that do, are the ones that prosper. And the ones that are so focused on driving near-term financial results at the, at the um, negative impact of investing in creativity are the ones that often result in very tragic times. <laughs> well, um, Irvin is a, is a wonderful uh, human being more than anything else. He's an outstanding leader on the basketball court, even more impressive in the boardroom. Um, but to me, the, the great thing about working with, with Irvin has nothing to do with numbers or, 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 or profits. It's watching him connect with others as a person. Uh, he, he is overwhelmingly humble. When you talk to him, it isn't like, hey, where's my entourage? Where's my, you know, me, me, me? He says, Josh, how can I help? How can we put people back to work in Detroit? How can I make a difference? I was in a meeting with him once, and I'll never forget it. We were talking about very complex business issues, and someone in our office brought their son in uh, to meet the legendary Magic Johnson. And he could have done a lot of things. He could have ignored it. He could have signed a quick autograph and, 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 and blown it off. But instead, he did the opposite. The rest of the meeting stopped, and he zoned in on that kid. He looked him in the eye, and he said, how you doing there, champ? Tell me, do you play ball? And he made that kid feel like the most important person in the world. And that's the impact that Irvin has. That's his real magic. It isn't driving economic performance or scoring points. It's making people feel special. And I'm so proud to have him as our partner.